my life has changed quite a bit from being a child to to adult and and then I became kind of parent to my parents as they aged right and now that they're gone I'm on my own and uh, my purpose is like just to go with what I love because what I love is uh, I really like taking people to the next level so for me anything that improve help that I can do for somebody to help improve their condition is a real gives me a zing so I look for ways to do that which is probably one reason why um, like I'm, I've led, the, I lead a weekly, this weekly exercise group for a small bunch of friends who are fairly senior. Uh, they range from like uh, late fifties to early seventies and we work out. <laughs> and the one who is in her fifties is trying to keep up with the rest of us. So and what's a workout like? Um, we do uh, a total of a hundred uh, squats each time we work out. And uh, not all in one shot, but we do a hundred squats and, and weighted uh, squats, so body sorry? Weight squats. Then weighted squats. The, the body weight squ- squats body because squat. the only is the only the only equipment we bring is a resistance band. And oh, I think strength good. strength is really important as you get older because you're losing muscle, right? So you want to maintain yeah, what you have, if not build a bit more. So uh, and flexibility as well. So we do things like posture exercises to correct and check posture. To make sure you got the muscles in the right places to hold yourself up upright and stuff like that. Yeah, so there's flexibility, um, strength, and uh, there's cardio as well. We do a very, I think, gentle, I think gentle, uh, exercise uh, where something I picked up from Dr. Rangan Chatterjee. I mean, I'm a bit of a podcast junkie and I listen to a whole bunch of doctors. And he has, has suggested, okay, you start, uh, say, um, find enough space where you can walk fl- uh, for, for, yeah, find, find a nice long stretch of spot and just walk for one minute for as fast as you can. And at the end of that, know where you are and then just stroll back, recover, and then you walk again. So we do about six of those. Then we started getting into all the other stuff, the posture, the flexibility, it's the, the other strength things. So, but most of all, we have a great time. And I think the social aspect is really the most important of this. Paul, what do you think of that? No, I think it's, I think it's excellent because throughout being fit, I think it's a, it's a process. It's a journey. And I think through that journey is whether you find your meaning or not, that journey is already purposeful because you, you have a path. Um, look, from my own perspective of, of being an elite athlete in Singapore, I've been an elite athlete playing in the Singapore hockey team for more than a decade. And what I've learned throughout that is, the aspects that there needs to be a process of how you do things. Um, and it has to start from baseline. Whether you are young or you're young at heart, there needs to be a process of how you do things. Then you know that you can create that purpose. So number one for me as an elite athlete, was an elite athlete and now an occupational therapist, we always go through number one is your goal setting. So if you don't have goals, then... You know, then your your path to towards life isn't that defined. You know, so if you have a broad goal, have a broad goal. Whether you want to, I wanna, I want to run a marathon in two months. All right, that's a broad goal. But we break down those broad, broader goals into smaller, more specific goals. Like what Kim was saying. Look, if we have to do a one minute walk, do as fast as you can. Let's time that. And then we can monitor that progress as well. So at least you're, you've created a path for yourself, right? So that's goal setting number one. And as an elite athlete and an occupational therapist now, motivation is part of being fit, but I don't think it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the whole thing. Um, a lot of people might give me a lot of flack for this, but I think once, you're on, once you've created a path, you know, set your goals, I think being this discipline will trump over motivation. Um, And I think the third part is change. Change can happen from now till maybe in two hours, things can change. In two years, things can change. 20 years, things can change. So I think setting a good foundation of lifestyle choices and nutrition is such an important factor. You are preparing your body to manage life complications and as an athlete before our goal was to you know be 
number two in Southeast Asia, let's say. We've got Malaysia. We, play, we always play against Malaysia. That's the goal. But if we are not consistent in our lifestyle choices, so training twice a day, two hours each, each session for seven days a week, then I don't think you'll reach your goal because that is what we set ourselves. That's the standard that we set ourselves for um, to reach that goal. Um, but in relation to occupational therapy, if, we are, we are, if I'm supporting a client reach their goals, I think helping them understand change and that it's in, inevitable that change will occur will, be, will help them create a more distinct picture of their life and then we can set those goals. You say that the, most of your members are sedentary. So what was it that uh, got them off their butts and into the gym? Was it fear? Do you yeah. say, uh, if you carry on that way, you are doomed. And that sort of gets them jumping up. I think most of them are fairly well educated. They have seen the media reports about um, how to age well. They know that they have to move more as they age but i would say the number one reason why most of them join is because they don't want to be a burden on their caregivers in future they have seen how difficult it is to look after their family members who are aging or have passed on and they hope that they will live in a world where they don't present too too much stress on their children and their siblings and their young nieces and nephews who are looking after them so I would say that most of them know they need to <laughs> they need to buck up a bit and uh, get stronger as they grow older. Uh, threatening them doesn't work. You can't tell them that you're going to die if you don't exercise. Uh, <laughs> nobody works well with threats. So I think um, creating a easy to start routine usually is the first way for them to come. If children want their parents to join us, the first thing that they should do is to make some time to accompany their parents on the first few trips and the first few exercise classes. Um, if more people influence their family members and their older loved ones at home at an early stage, then they would realize that that aging journey for that person becomes easier. It's like the first day of school. Why do parents take leave to bring their kids for primary one orientation? But children don't take leave to bring their parents to the gym after retirement. 